guys, welcome to my channel. It's Lisa Tripskit and in this video I will be showing you Burgundy and some places in Champagne as well. We started our trip in Dijon and finished in Reims and we visited a lot of different wineries, had lots of wine tasting, beautiful villages. Overall, it was such a lovely trip. We are doing a small road trip around Burgundy. We're going to some of the most beautiful places. Uh, unfortunately, we're not so lucky with the weather. It was literally just so hot a week before, but right now it's a little bit chilly. Uh, it is supposed to get warmer towards the middle of the day, but nonetheless, I don't think it's going to stop us enjoying from enjoying this beautiful place. Our first stop is Dijon. We actually spent a day in Paris yesterday working remotely, so we only got to Dijon around um, 1 a.m. at night. Dijon is the capital of Burgundy and it's one of the most beautiful cities. We are so excited to see it. We are currently just outside the city center, so we'll see it in a couple of minutes. We're just uh, getting some coffee for takeaway and we will also be checking out some of the best uh, bakeries in the city center. Unfortunately, quite a few of them are closed, even though it's just Saturday, but I guess lots of smaller bakeries don't work on the weekends. You might have heard the name Dijon because of the mustard, the famous Dijon mustard. And of course, there is a shop selling mustard in the heart of Dijon. The shop is actually quite interesting and they sell all the different types of mustards. You can buy a lot of presents and souvenirs there. And there are some really nice, beautiful packages. That's what we got uh, for breakfast. It's um, a traditional French puff pastry uh, that's empty inside, but it has a lovely crust of cheese on the top. So I really liked it. Dijon is the capital of Burgundy and it's also a very beautiful city. It has a large old town and it just feels so nice to walk around and explore the beautiful streets of the old historic city center. Many people, however, are wondering which city is it better to visit, Dijon or Bonn. And while, of course, Dijon is the historic um, capital, Bonn is actually the wine capital of Burgundy. So if wine is the main reason you're visiting this part of France, then you should probably stay in Bonn and make Bonn your base and then go on small trips from Bonn to different vineyards. If you're interested in landmarks, in um, kind of food and museums, then Dijon is probably a better option and Dijon is also a little bit closer to Paris and a little bit easier to get to. Since we only had three days to explore all of Burgundy and a little bit of Champagne, we were really short of time. So we only spent about two or three hours in Dijon and had to go to the next destination, to Bonn, which we just discussed. We arrived to the second place in our itinerary of the three days in Burgundy and it's Bonn. I had to Google how to pronounce it because I had difficulties, but it was often mentioned as the most beautiful city in Burgundy and it also is the wine capital of Burgundy and one of the wine capitals in the world. Actually, there are so many chateaus and domains that are located just outside Bonn and that have vineyards and wine tasting tours. And actually we're going to a wine tasting um, experience just after visiting Bonn. So we're pretty excited. Unfortunately, the market is already closing down. The market looked amazing, to be fair. But yeah, it's time for it to close down and it's just 1 p.m. <laughs> Bonn seemed much, much smaller than Dijon and we could literally walk around the entire city in just about maybe 40 minutes. But unfortunately, we couldn't go to the main attraction, the main landmark of the city, uh, Hotel Dieu or Hospices of Bonn. It was the one of the first um, hospitals for poor people and was opened in the middle of the 15th century. It remained a charitable institution and housed lots of poor people, orphans and women and elderly people, as well as sickly and injured and those who 
just couldn't afford any treatment, and then it was transformed into a normal hospital and remained a hospital until the end of 1970s. Right now it's a museum and you need to buy a ticket to get in. And what is remarkable about this hospital is how beautiful it is. Besides the hospices of Bonn, there are a couple of museums you can visit in the city. And one of the museums is, of course, dedicated to wine. But in our case, we just decided to book a wine tasting not in Bonn, but in one of the wineries outside the city. We decided to pick the most beautiful winery, in my opinion, because it was located in a real castle, uh, in a castle called Santne Castle. The name of the winery is actually Domaine du Chateau Philippe Le Hardy, and it's quite a big winery. It's uh, located in multiple places around France, so not just in uh, Burgundy. We booked our wine tasting in advance, and I think it was something like 10 euros per person. And for that, we got three tiny glasses of wine. Actually, Burgundy specializes in red wine, uh, except for just one um, super famous white wine from the region, from a place called Chablis. Uh, I'm sure if you like wine, you have probably heard of Chablis. Later in this trip, we are going to visit Chablis, so stay tuned. In total, we spent around 45 minutes at the winery before the next group arrived and then drove for around 35 minutes to the next very exciting destination. We arrived at a village called Chateauneuf and it's so beautiful, it's really atmospheric and it's probably the most beautiful place we've seen so far. Chateauneuf is an absolutely tiny village with a population of 80 people or something like that. But yeah, it's really, really tiny. But nonetheless, we found it on a lot of different lists of the most beautiful villages and towns to visit in Burgundy. And now, having visited quite a few of different places in Burgundy, I must admit that it truly deserves its, its spot in the rankings. There is also a stunning 15th century castle or chateau, Chateau de Chateauneuf, that you can visit. Uh, it's open to public and you just need to buy a ticket and you can see this beauty in real life. Also, the views from there are absolutely gorgeous. Just look at that. Of course, we have visited in summer and it was a really nice sunny day, but just look how beautiful it is. It was already almost 4 p.m. and if you have ever been to France, you probably know how difficult it is to eat in France outside the lunch hours and lunch generally stops at around 2 or 2.30 p.m. But luckily for us, there was a creperie or kind of like a cafe that was open all day. So we grabbed some quick uh, salads and a charcuterie board there. After lunch, it was time for us to go to the next and the final destination for the day, our hotel, located not too far from the very stunning village of Noyer. We stayed at a hotel called Auberge La Bersadier. I probably butchered this name. Every, every single room is themed and our room is called Sabatier, so the person who is shoemaker pretty much. And the little, like, ancient molds for the shoemaking, some tools. Um, it's very simple. Oh, look, these little shoes here. There's a bathroom and a toilet. So yes, yeah, very pretty. Next morning, we woke up early and started driving to the next destination, not too far away from this hotel. Our first stop for today is the medieval village called Noyers. Uh, it's a village that was located just around 10 minutes driving from our accommodation. It is UNESCO protected because it has an absolutely stunning medieval town center. Noyer actually is smaller than it looks. The population of the town doesn't exceed 600 people, but it looked like quite a few people were actually leaving here compared to Chateauneuf. Um, but um, of course, Noyer is a very touristic place and there are lots of music videos, TV series and movies that were filmed on the cobblestone streets of this lovely town. <laughs> 
And of course, we couldn't miss a really nice patisserie that we found in the heart of Moya. <laughs> <laughs> There are also lots of places to walk around in Moye, including this lovely walk along the river that actually leads to the ruins of the castle. That castle used to be one of the most powerful and beautiful castles in France in the 12th and in the 13th centuries, but unfortunately it gradually declined. And right now there isn't much to see apart from some ruins, but there is a project, ongoing project of the local community where people are trying to rebuild um, this castle brick by brick using traditional methods. And of course, it's taking a while to rebuild. Um, also, there are really nice viewpoints from where you can see the whole Noyer in front of you. Our next destination was also just a short drive away. And that was a place that I have briefly mentioned before, the town of Chablis, that is famous for its white wine. We went straight to a wine tasting at Maison Renard that we have pre-booked beforehand. And this time the tasting was around 15 euros per person and it included five glasses, uh, not just three tiny glasses, as uh, the one we had before. And in my opinion, it was much better. Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, the plan in Chablis was to visit a place called Domaine La Roche, which is a hotel and a winery, and also one of the finest wine producers in Chablis. I actually tried the wine from Domaine La Roche in London before. It was a vintage Grand Cru, and it was genuinely the best wine I've tried in my entire life. So I just wanted to visit the place that produced this wine and have a tasting or buy another bottle, probably a slightly cheaper one. But unfortunately, it was closed. We found it completely, completely closed. It looks like it was closed for a while. Maybe it was closed for a couple of weeks for the end of summer holidays. But yeah, we were quite upset and unfortunately we couldn't even find wine from Domaine La Roche in the wine shops in Chablis. Um, but it is much easier to find in London for some reason. The wines in Chablis have a very strong mineral taste and very nice aftertaste. And that's because the uh, soil, the, actually the hills of Chablis, were underwater many 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 thousands of years ago and because of that they have very high mineral content a lot of fossils uh, in the soil and that's why the wine tastes so good the town itself was nice um, very beautiful but probably not as beautiful as other places we have visited on this trip but luckily there was a really nice market that was happening in the heart of Chablis we walked around and saw some really good local produce. Unfortunately, we couldn't find anything to eat there, but there were quite a few things you could buy for um, for home. So we went to another restaurant. Uh, we ended up really loving it, but our friends didn't like it at all. I will leave the name, but uh, keep in mind that not everyone likes it. We arrived to a town Mama. called Vesilay, uh, listed in the list of the, the most beautiful towns in Burgundy, and we absolutely had to visit it. It is located on top of a hill, so it's like a fortified town, it's really, really small, and of course, it is Sunday evening, so pretty much everything will be closed, which we of course expected, but it is a really nice place. And we are super excited to see it. It's a lovely pedestrian town, pedestrian village. Um, you cannot enter here by car. You have to leave it outside, which is lovely. Vesele is an absolutely ancient town. The first um, settlements in uh, the proximity of the town are dating to almost 2000 years before Christ. In the medieval ages, it was also a very important town. It has the 11th century Basilica of San Magdalene, that is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and it is indeed very impressive. It was also one of the busiest towns that we have visited, and we were wrong because there, there were lots of businesses and cafes that were actually open there. 
Our next destination was a slightly longer drive away. We drove around 50 minutes to a place called Semur. But uh, before going to the old town, we actually stopped uh, at a really nice viewpoint from where we could see the entire Seymour and Aksuwa. It is really hard to pronounce the name of this town for some reason, so I uh, probably pronounced it incorrectly. Seymour and Aksuwa is one of the biggest towns we have visited so far. The population of a town exceeds 4,000 people, so you see it's getting bigger and bigger. And there are actually lots of proper restaurants, proper shops, and there is even a settlement, of course, outside the old city walls. Interestingly enough, the population of Seymour hasn't changed in the last 250 years. It was always around four um, to four and a half thousand people. Semur is a medieval town. It has lots of buildings built in the 15th century. Um, there was a castle that was built also in the medieval times. Unfortunately, only a few bits of the castle are remaining. Um, probably one of the oldest remaining buildings was the Notre Dame Church, built in uh, 1225. Uh, and, but it was rebuilt in the 19th century, so it looks pretty um, well maintained. And that's why. The most beautiful part of the town is, however, located down the stairs. Also from the stairs, you can see really beautiful views of the countryside around Seymour. And this is probably the most photographed view of Seymour. It's this uh, beautiful bridge uh, and the old city, old town located along the river. It just looked so tranquil and stunning. The only downside is actually that this bridge is fully functional and you can drive across this bridge and there are actually quite a few cars, so you have to share it with the cars, unfortunately. Then we drove for almost two hours to another province, Champagne, and to one of its most important cities, Troyes. Good morning guys, it's our day three and the last day of our road trip around Burgundy and Champagne region and we are in Troyes. Troyes is a really beautiful city and I honestly haven't expected it to be so stunning. This area of Troyes looks like a movie set, honestly it looks absolutely unreal and uh, the houses are so old, it's so pretty. Troyes is a relatively small city with a population of only 60,000 people, yet it has pretty much everything one may need. It has lots of shops, restaurants, and a very beautiful city center. Troyes is also an ancient city. It was already important during the Roman times. Unfortunately, there was a really huge fire in the beginning of the 16th century that destroyed most of the medieval buildings. However, since the city was so important, it was actually rebuilt, largely rebuilt, and lots of the buildings in the heart of the old town are actually dating to the middle of the 16th century, hence the style, that, that style was really popular during those times. The style of the half-timbered houses um, was popular in a lot of European cities. You can still see quite a few buildings of that style even in the UK. You can see quite a few in northern Germany, uh, also in the Alsace region. Uh, but here uh, I've seen probably the highest number of those buildings I've ever seen anywhere else. There was also another thing that I've never seen before, and that was this vending machine. The vending machine of... Kekumba. 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 Oh, look at the size of this tomato. Wow. No, I've seen such a big tomato now. Wow. Wow. And the cheese is even there. Yeah, they're refilling it. Oh, it's if the veggies from the vending machine are not up to your standard and if you are lucky enough to witness the main market of Troyes open, then you can head there and choose um, some vegetables and fruits from there. We actually bought some really nice peaches from this market and they were glorious. Uh, so yeah, a great place to buy fruits. 
After Troyes, we went to another destination. Of course, no visit to Champagne can be completed without a degustation, a proper Champagne tasting. We had a few options. Of course, we were booking last minute because we made a, a tiny adjustment to our itinerary. Um, and we found a place that had availability called Meli. And that's where we had it. This champagne tasting was, of course, the most expensive. It was 25 euros per person, but it ended up being the best value because in the end, we really liked the vintage champagne uh, that was around 120 euros per bottle. Uh, we bought a bottle of that and they told us that the tasting is free if you buy a bottle like that. So in the end, it was amazing. Uh, we learned so much about champagne. Our last and final stop of this trip was the stop in the also one of the most important cities in Champagne region and one of the biggest cities there called Reims or in French is pronounced as Reims. Um, it's uh, famous for its glorious cathedral located in the heart of the city and it's the cathedral where most of French monarchs uh, were crowned. 29 kings of France were crowned at Reims between um, the 11th century and the beginning of the 19th century. And the cathedral is also um, one of the most important examples of the Gothic uh, architecture the present building um, was built in the 13th and 14th centuries, so it's pretty old. The city itself is also ancient, uh, like Troyes, it dates back to the Roman times. It's also a bit bigger than Troyes, probably twice bigger, and it feels uh, like that. There is also even a tram in the city centre. But in terms of architecture, um, besides the cathedral, of course, uh, Troyes seems a little more impressive. Uh, so uh, we didn't spend too much time walking around the city, we just saw some of the main streets. Unfortunately, Reims suffered a lot of damage during the First and Second World Wars, so lots of buildings in the city centre date back to the 18th and 19th centuries, so the city feels way more modern than Troyes, and remind, reminded us a little bit of Paris, at least in some parts. It is more uh, regal, kind of like a lot more, I don't know, royal, has more space and feels way less medieval. On this positive note, our journey around the Burgundy region of France and Champagne is coming to an end. We are currently in Reims, in front of this beautiful cathedral, but it's time to go back to Calais for the Eurotunnel. And uh, it is actually two and a half hours to Calais, so we have to better get going now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and see hopefully see you next video hopefully you found it useful as well and found something interesting for yourself so see you soon yeah, yeah, yeah.